out of here. <laughs> Must be the dog. Yeah. I think he's talking to me. <sighs> Jessica is new to properties and facilities. Are you? Principal J.M. Hill. Hi. Hello. If you want. Is that Mr. Andrews? Yes. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Oh, you know what? I'm going to throw my packet. We'll share. Thank you. There should be some redesign principles to attach me. Dog is chasing your cat, Lisa. Yeah, right. <laughs> I don't know where she went. She's usually laying right here while I'm in a meeting. Well, hopefully next month we'll be able to meet in this boardroom. Yeah. So I just um. I did it this time because of the governor's orders and I didn't know if he would lift it because this is the day after the first, you know, first day they're back. Yeah, well, he, yeah, he, well, he did lift it, but I'm glad he lifted, but you know, we, we can live with this. <laughs> it works. I think the governor may be getting a little bit uh, intimidated by the public, which is great. <laughs> exactly. He needs to be a little intimidated. Yep. Uh, Are we waiting for Sharon? There's Daryl. We only see his eyes and top of his head. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like you're looking at us over the yeah. fence, you know? <laughs> I was having technical difficulties. Is it in here? Yeah. There's Sharon. Hello. What are you looking for? It's the, there's a couple of bid sheets for it. What's the uh, page? Where is it on here? I don't even see it actually. Here. No, it's a portable. Oh, uh, yeah. It must be on the next page. Hey, we're ready when you're ready. We're ready. It's 5 30. Let's call to order the East Strasburg Area School District Board of Education's Properties and Facilities Committee meeting um, irrigation via Zoom, January 5th, First three of them. 2021 at 530 uh, with the Pledge of Allegiance. Are we all ready? <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, United States of America and to the, and to the Republic, Republic for which it stands. One nation, One nation. Under with liberty and justice for all. What a concept! Absolutely. <laughs> okay, roll call, please, Rebecca. Larry Diamond. Present. Sharon Glasgow. 
Here. Wayne Rohner. Here. Lisa Van Wy. Here. We're looking at the. I need a motion to approve the minutes for December 8th, 2020 meeting, along with the agenda for January 5th, 2021, with members of the committee reserving the right to add to the agenda and take further action in the best interest of the district. So moved. Second. <laughs> Any discussion on that? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The next properties and facility meeting is scheduled for February 5th, 2021. Hopefully that will be in person. Items requiring action, JM Hill elementary proposal. So that must be why Jessica is here. Um, so this is redesign of the principal's office. Do you wanna run them all together? redesign of room 701 and installation of sink base countertop in the school main office area. So I'm assuming it, it all kind of correlates together when I was looking at the plan. It, it, it does, and, and I can speak to it if you would like. Okay, that's fine, thank you. Okay, sure, the, the current layout of the principal office um, is an open concept, it's, it's one big office. And as noted on um, attachment 6A1, uh, Principal Reese is requesting that a new wall be constructed um, for the purpose of adding an office area for the Dean of Students. Uh, the Dean of Students is currently stationed outside of and down the hallway from the main office. Um, this, this whole improve communications between Principal Reese and the Dean as well as the purpose of um, the show doing meetings with students in one area instead of going back and forth up and down the hallway. Um, in addition to the new wall, two doors and frames um, would be added, one for the principal office and one for the Dean's office um, and to be installed. Um, the areas, and I, and I don't know if you have the, hopefully you have the attachments. I can hardly hear you. I don't, you're like fading in and out. Okay. All right. Apologize for I was fine a few minutes okay. ago. Because it was Would that help? I don't Let's know. Let's see how it goes. Somebody's background's getting in interference, but go ahead. Are you still there? Uh, um, can you hear me now? If I speak? Are you able to hear me? May, may I suggest that um, those that aren't speaking, maybe if we mute our microphones, I think that sometimes interferes. I'm not sure. Because I yeah. was having... I was fine earlier speaking. I don't know. Yeah. Everybody mute. Larry, do you mind muting for? I'll start over. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Hang Thank on. Thank you. Let's try it. If that oh. helps. You. Well, I heard you without muting. Okay. It, am I clear now? Also. Yeah, let's let's try it. I'm sorry. Okay, I'll start over okay. um, again. The, the, the current layout in the principal's office um, right now, it's, it's one big office. It's an open concept. And um, again, on as noted on attachment um, 6A1, Principal Reese is um, requesting that a new wall be constructed. And this is for the purpose of adding an office area for the dean of students. So she would primarily split her office in half, adding half of the office for the dean of students who is currently um, stationed outside of her office and down the hallway um, from the main office. This will help them um, improve communications between the two of them and also will help with um, the purpose of dual meetings with students when they have meetings with students. In addition to the um, new proposed wall, two office um, doors and frames, one for the principal office and one for the dean office will need to be installed. Um, these areas, hopefully you can see them on your um, attachments. The divided line is what is indicating the new proposed walls and doors. And then we, on the um, second redesign, which is of room 107, and that's on attachment um, 6A2, 
you'll note that room 107 proposal um, is for the addition of new walls and office doors. Right now, again, this is one big um, room. It used to be a classroom, I'm presuming, back in the day. In any case, it's one big room, which currently it houses um, two office spaces, not offices, but office stations, I guess I should say, in one big room here in, in 107. Um, and the proposal is to configure the current space into two offices, a conference room, and a waiting area. Again, it's the addition of the walls is indicated on the um, steps that I provided, 6A2, and the divided lines will indicate the new walls and new proposed doors. Um, the current ceiling height in this area is, is nine feet high. So new walls would be erected eight feet in height and thus allowing for um, lighting and HVAC to be maintained um, via the existing design. So we would not have to get involved with any um, lighting and HVAC issues in this area. Um, the new design, this design will require addition again of new walls and office doors and frames. Um, Self-explanatory, I'm hoping on the um, plan that I've submitted on the attachments. So who's gonna, who's doing the construction? We, that can, can be done in-house with, with okay. maintenance staff. I'm sure Wayne's gonna ask, but Wayne can ask if he wants. I'm thinking he's talking about permits maybe. Well, that will be a call <laughs> in the design. And the flaw is it's not ADA compliant because there's no way 32 inch door is ADA compliant. So uh, this, be, this is a public institution. Yeah, you're getting permits. Painful are, for the district to do so, I know. Are we confident that the 32 inches is not ADA? I think it's, yeah, I really do. I'll, I'll double check that, Wayne. I'm, I'm not disagreeing with you, but I, I was under the impression that 32 inches is ADA approved, but I will okay. um, verify, I will verify that. And, and if that is incorrect, if I'm incorrect, we can certainly- you know, When does this work have to be done? We're looking at this for at the end of the school year. It'll be done um, at the, in the summertime. Okay, well However, then get Dewey to do uh, floor plans, get them down to the borough ASAP. That has to be ADA compliant you will need permits because that's the nature of the beast. Sure, I just want to get past the approval part first, certainly. Yeah, I um, mean, we're really just here discussing whether we're gonna do it at this point. Correct, uh, yes. Um, the, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. The, the estimated um, cost um, that, that I come up with for, for this, and now we're also talking about the addition of a sink, which I'll get into in a minute in the, in the main office area. I estimate this not to exceed six thousand dollars in materials, and Principal Reese currently has funds available in her general operating budget to cover the expenses. Um, however, it is for this year, so should we move forward, we would want to do this as soon as the year school year ends, so we can finish it during this um, fiscal um, year. Which, which I don't see a problem with doing that in-house during the fiscal year. I assume we can begin right in, in June. Right. So it's already, um, she has it budgeted in this fiscal year, you're saying, right? That's correct. Okay. I just wanted to repeat that because I didn't hear the whole thing. So, okay. Um. And then, then the third item um, on this list is the addition of a sink and sink-based within the main office area. And I also um, submitted a photo on um, six, attachment 6A3, and I, I noted the area for the proposed sink location. And if you may note to the right of that is an existing countertop, no sink um, in that area, but our, our proposal would be to put a sink and sink face in that area and then extend the existing countertop onto the new sink base. Is there, and again, that would be done in house. Is there plumbing there? I'm sorry, what? Is there be. plumbing in that area? No, there's not plumbing right there, but we have access to it. And it is something that we can do in house. 
Again, we do have access for that. And this is also included within that $6,000 estimate, all three of these line items. Uh, Scott, this sink, is, is this JM Hill too? Yeah. It, it is. It, it, this is the main office area, which is adjacent to the principal's office area. And then room 107 is on the other side adjacent to the principal's office. So the principal's oh, office, office would be in the main office area area. per se of the main office in room 107. So all three are adjoining areas, rooms. Okay. It's a simple task. I'm okay with that. Is everybody yeah. else kind of okay with that? Yeah, or we can definitely get a sink though for less than 7,000. The six thousand dollar budget is what they it included the sink approximately, right? I hope so. so that's what uh, Scott, I believe. That's what Scott said. Yeah, I, I would think a, a regular sink with a base uh, cabinet. Uh, all inclusive. Well, all inclusive. And again, that's on the high side, also. But I just want you to make sure just in case we run. I'm sorry. Where are the parties? There's no pricing. He said it's coming out of uh, JM Hill's operating budget oh, okay. for this year. So okay. basically, um, I guess we would just be, do we need a motion to proceed with that? I would support that and get uh, Dewey Engineering to uh, put their engineer stamp on a, a simple plan, get it to the borough. ASAP so that you can uh, streamline your uh, timeline so you can meet your timeline. And okay. Scott, so, Scott, you are correct. The minimum door width for ADA is 32 inches. Okay. Well, that's why the plan review will show us where we're not compliant. Okay. So, um, Lisa, okay. Sorry, Lisa, if I could just yes. jump in real quick. So um, we're actually looking at the uh, secured vestibule improvements at JM Hill um, also as a capital project. I'm just wondering if, if we want to combine the office renovations along with that pro project and we can just, you know, include that in the bid. Um, just something to think about, I guess, and, you know, instead what of What was the timeline on that, Josh? Well, right. that, would be, that would, yeah, that would be a summer project. That's going to, you know, impact the um, use of that main entrance and lobby. So that was going to be a summer twenty-one timeframe. But um, you know, if the schedule does permit for the office work to happen at the same time, we can wrap it into that. If not, then you know that can be a separate project. I just wanted to throw that out there. My well, recommendation is fun. that they should be separate just because they're coming from two different budgets. One's an operating budget and one's a capital budget. So I think we should look at it. I agree, um, sure. That's what I was going to say. Those out. Yeah. I don't care how it's done, just as long as it's done at the same time. Okay. Right. One, one quick question. Yep. All right. Have we, um, is there any way we could, uh, or have we looked at the nurse's office? You know, there's there's some issues there with that as far as like privacy and spacing people out and things like that. Um, yeah, Larry, we um, we began to do a couple sketches for JM Hill for the the space that the nurse has moved into now. Um, we've discussed some things with them, and we're going to have some revisions, and we'll be presenting something. Um, you know, we have a plan together. Once the revi revisions are made, we can be presenting something maybe for next meeting if you guys would like to see something for the nurse's suite. Okay. okay. But for now, yeah, we'll... So that's been in talks, but the, the main concern was for the secured vestibule. Um, since she was able to move over there and have that nurse's space um, from her, you know, the previous space. So we can um, try to, I can get something prepared for next meeting for that if you'd like. All right. I, I do have one more question now that we're talking about J.M. Hill. Um, let me think if you're, if you're facing the building, if you're standing on the street, looking at the front of the building to the left end of the building, where the natural gas comes in, there's a pipe that comes up in the yard and then goes back down in the ground. Um, I've never seen anything like that in my life. Um, I, you know, I just consider that to be a safety hazard. I wish somebody would look into that 
and determine if that is a live line or a dead line or whatever. And, and if it is a live line, get it put below ground so that, you know, if a car or a snowplow would mm -hmm. jump the road there or something and shear that thing off, that we don't have a major uh, problem. What's that, the Diagon Street? Yeah. Well, someone can look at that, but, okay. Well, we've talked about it for four or five years. It'd be nice to, to get something moving forward on it, so. Can I can give you GI a call, Larry. That's that they own that line. I can give them a call and have them come out and take a look. All right, and then you'll get a report for next month. Sure. Thank you. No problem. Okay. Um. So Genie Portable Lift Model AWP three hundred five. Who's got that? I uh, will speak to that also. Um, this is um, for, a, a main, for maintenance. Um, the district um, maintenance. I can't hear you, can't hear you, Scott. I don't know if anyone else can hear. Can you no. hear, Scott? No. Nope. Try it again. <laughs> uh, all right. Let me try to go somewhere else. No, no good yet? Yep, you're good right now. Okay. I'll try not to move. Yeah, that will be good. <laughs> all right. We, this is for maintenance. We currently have a lift. Um, and it's housed in, in high school south. However, it's not considered a portable lift, and it's very difficult and cumbersome. Hey, you're away. So but, sorry. Okay, I'm sorry. The uh, the lift that we have currently is housed in high school south, and it's not a portable unit per se, and it's very difficult and cumbersome to transport. And it's also above the six foot eight inch door height, so when we do take it to other buildings, we must tilt this backwards mm -hmm. in order to access other buildings. So that's the, the interest in purchasing a new uh, man lift. And this one has the capability to fit under the um, six foot eight. Um, Can you height. hear? And this You're is also this me. budgeted. No, it's not you. I think it's his reception. I'm going to try to move around. Some it's more. good for a minute and then it kind of fades away. Okay, I'm going to, I'm going to <laughs> find a spot, right? All right, I'm going to talk and you let me know when I'm good. Please. If I'm still not good, I don't know what to do. Get a house tour while we're at it. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> All right, here's my sock door. Um, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Not much better. Yeah, um, there. So <laughs> one more area here. I apologize. How about now? We're you're good right there. Don't move in the dark. Okay. I'm in the know. dark. Hopefully, okay. it lasts. No. No. Not good. All right. I don't know. It's the same issue. Can't hear me. This this lift is budgeted for through the maintenance general operating budget. Maintenance. No good. I heard it's budgeted through the maintenance general operating budget. That's correct. How much is it? And the and reason is for this purchase is because the existing lift which we have. The existing list, list we have, can you hear me or no? <laughs> God, try shutting off your video. See if that helps. Any, any better? Right now it is. <laughs> Let's try it. Uh, what's it, what are we using this for? Hold on. No, what are we using it for? <laughs> Hold outside, I'm gonna go outside. Are you still there, Scott? Yes, no. Yes. Okay. Yes, so here. where is this where is this to be used for? Everywhere throughout the district. Oh, okay. Because the current one I heard it's, the current one we have portable, is I correct and you can't fit it through the doorways. Is that right? Without tipping that, it. 
That that's is correct. Right. Okay. That, 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 that's correct. So that's a safety issue. Um, and it's budgeted for this school year 2021 out of the maintenance general operating budget. That's correct. The current budget. That's correct. So I see we have three bids here. Or wait. It's yes. Insurance. The system. Yes. And are they all? I, I did look at this at one time, but I slept since then. Are they all they, the same? They are identical, yes. Okay. And we don't have to do any, this is below the bid threshold and all that, correct? Yes. Correct. Yes. Okay, Wayne, you got something. I see, yeah. Yeah, is this thing safe? How do you anchor this thing as you're going up? I'm just curious. <laughs> I I could speak to that a little, Scott, if you don't mind. Sure. It, it, it has way. it has outriggers that hook into it in an X pattern that have to be clicked in and leveled before the machine will allow it to go up and down. Great. All right. What are, what are we going to do with the old one, Bins? It's it's a real problem getting it through doors. Are we going to trade that in, or are we going to sell it, or? No, we can still use that in the high school cell. Yeah, I'd keep it. You, you can gym lights, gymnasium lights and such. I, could you repeat that, Scott? Yes, Larry, we, we plan to we plan on keeping that. We are going okay. to keep we're going to keep that unit in, in high school cell and use it within high school cell, gymnasium auditorium and such. All right. Okay. So we're so you're recommending the lowest bid action material handling specialist? Yes, that's correct. Okay. Okay, on to item C, Dewey Engineering invoices. Um any question on those or any discussion on those? So I know it's uh, one of the light, uh, line items further down, but um, Wayne, we obtained the certificate of occupancy, uh, I think it was the second week of December. So, and that was given to the main office and, you know, so that Scott has that on record. Was all the, um, was there a, a punch list or anything with that? Yep, the punch list was um, completed other than splash blocks and a little bit of cleanup. They'll be coming out next week to get that stuff completed. They had to order a few more splash blocks for the areas where there's gutters. Okay. And that certificate's from, uh, what is it, BUI, Lehman Township? Yeah, it's from Lehman Township's third party inspectors. Thank you. Yep. I'll be there tomorrow. <laughs> Okay. Um, no other questions on these invoices here for Dewey? Okay. Um, Terp consulting invoice for $500 for elementary consulting fee. I'm not sure why we're seeing that. Any question? What is it for? <laughs> am, I, am I being heard right now? I can speak to that, Scott. Expert. Oh, it's the expert. That's, thank you, Dr. Ricker. Yeah. Okay. So this That's is right. the this is a gentleman that was um, hired by the district through Lyman and Ash to do the visual inspection back in June uh, of ESE sprinkler system. He did a presentation right. then in July to the board. Um, and I did question why we were getting a $500 invoice from him for, uh, in December when his work was completed back in June and July. I did receive uh, an email from uh, Ms. Lynch who indicated that uh, on that day, Sunday, September 13th, uh, Mr. Hopkins, who this is for, participated in a phone conference with Lyman and Ash to discuss uh, the civil action complaint, which was to be filed the next day 
in the sprinkler lawsuit and that that conversation lasted for an hour and 52 minutes. Um, he then had uh, a draft was sent to Mr. Hopkins of which he replied to uh, 59 minutes later and stated he had no additional com comments. He then billed uh, for two and a half hours for his time that day on Sunday, September 13th. Okay. That's the only explanation I received regarding that $500 invoice. That's September 13th, right? Not December. Is that what you said? Yes, yeah, September. I believe that was the phone call with uh, all of us, Larry, myself, and Lyman and Ash. Mara. Sunday to 13th. Was it Sunday though? Maybe that's not. What, no. Email says Sunday. It Sunday. wasn't on a Sunday. <laughs> hmm. I don't know what that is then. Okay. Hmm. Well, it's not hard. My phone will give me a calendar. I don't know. Okay. Uh. I don't remember that conversation now then. Okay, so. I think what's interesting for the prices that we pay for phone conversations, we need to have transcripts so that yeah. we can really understand and articulate what was discussed. Right. Um, because what, that's, that's a great conversation. Yeah, what was the, um, wait, I'm sorry. Did, uh, I guess, uh, Billy, did she, did, who was involved in that? That was Mara and him. Do you know? Uh, no, she just, she indicated, again, I'm reading right from her email. Um, she said on Sunday, September 13th, Mark Hopkins, PE, participated in a phone conference with Lyman and Ash attorneys. So she did not specify who else was involved in the conversation uh, or provide any additional information. So this was a follow-up probably in reference to his investigation to them? Maybe a follow-up phone call? Mm. Yeah, I, I, I think it was. I wasn't around on Sunday when, when uh, that took place, but I think uh, they were working against the deadline to get the, the paperwork filed. And, uh, you know, I didn't realize that was... Uh, Time of the essence. Yeah, it was time of the essence. I know she was pushing for it. And uh, well, I'm sure that's the case. But I think what we're questioning is like, you know, just the whole, you know, what was it? You know, why is there additional money? Whatever. So, well, so are we and, like, like Sharon said, a little more, a little more meat to that would have been great, right? Are we, are we questioning this invoice? I just didn't know what it was for. That's all. You know, the funny thing is when you look at the agenda, just looking at Terp Consulting for the, the an invoice number and the amount, it just, just says elementary consulting fees, but it doesn't tell us anything about what the consulting was for. So we could just be a little more clearer then we can avoid some of the, um, the dialogue. It's just not self-explanatory. And, you know, being new to the committee, I, I have no clue what I would be talking about. Yeah, I, I, I agree. There should have been a little more detail, but I, I do I do remember that there was a deadline to meet and and Sunday was the only time that uh, the, those parties could get together. I, I couldn't participate. I, I had something that I couldn't cancel that day. Um, so I'm sure it was Mara and probably one of the other attorneys that that went through uh, uh, all the details so that they could, uh, uh, you know, send out the letters and, and meet their deadline. So, okay. as far so as I guess the one comment that I have is with the attorneys in the future, if they could just send us more of an explanation so that we could post it correctly. Right. Because we're okay. paying them. The discussion should be yeah. within 30 days of receipt of the invoice, too. That would be uh, appropriate, too. It was, and you will likely get billed for another two and a half hours from the attorneys. That's fine, as long as it's within 30 days of the receipt of uh, the invoice. Well, this wasn't, this one wasn't within 30 days, it's six months later. Yeah, well, we're now talking about it six months later, I understand that. 
but you just said it's contradictory. Did I misunderstand? You did. You said and within 30 days, but this one isn't within 30 we're days. We're getting an invoice on September. This is dated uh, September 30th. So if we get an invoice in September, we should be discussing this in November as opposed to January. This invoice was just received. But it's dated September 30th. I don't have a receipt date. Uh, we typically will stamp them received. Well, this one isn't. No, we haven't. Okay. I do have a question because I just because maybe I, I don't understand. So we're we're paying the attorney. Why wouldn't the attorney pay the fees of the consultant that they hired and we just pay one bill for the project or the, I, I'm not sure, but just the thought, like why should we get multiple bills? Probably the language in the contract. No, this was, this was a separate issue. They asked to um, obtain- find an add-on investigation just to follow up for the sprinklers. I understand yeah. that. But I guess my question, I guess my thoughts are, and I'm not against for or against, but just, you know, just to be a little more clear, and it sounds like timeliness is an issue. I mean, we clearly don't understand. We know there's a dialogue that took place, but give us just a little bit more information. Right. I agree. But I'm okay with, you know, yeah. just trying to understand. Okay. All right. Let's move forward on the um, grounds department water wheel. I guess Daryl has that one. And it's uh, site one landscaping supplies, CFS irrigation, and Brookdale Fruit Farm Inc. <laughs> so you're up, Daryl. <laughs> All right. Well, we've been talking about this for some time, and uh, we have all three quotes here. This is a Kifco B140 water wheel. Um, I could really use this machine at, uh, at our JTL school. To, for to irrigate in the summertime when we need water. Uh, Was this budgeted? Th this, ha this has gone through property for, and facilities in the past. Was approved. It was budgeted. And then we didn't get it because there was other questions uh, about the water up there, what we had pressure-wise and everything. So the original one that I brought before the property and facilities <clears throat> I, I canceled because it was a smaller one based on what we had. And Larry was up a few times. We'd looked it over. Um, and this now, I, I changed it. I went from a 110 to a 140, which after having Broadhead Water Authority there and everyone there, I believe that this is what we can use. Yes. Okay. PSI, one, two. Okay. Any other discussion on that? Are you recommending taking the lowest? Um, absolutely, yeah, that's uh, site, site one landscape supply. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's all the same. They're all the same exact unit, everything. So, okay. yeah. All right, Daryl, my, my question is, uh, the original one was like for 36 or 3,800, right? Well, Larry, I don't remember, Larry, exactly what that was. I could probably dig that up and get it for you, but that was quite some time ago. Okay. Um, you know, it seems like a big jump in price because basically all we're doing is in, instead of having a, a sprinkler that we're just working off of the water pressure, you know, we're adding a, a Honda engine to boost the pressure some. Mm -hmm. That seems like a lot of money for a Honda engine, you know? It, well, it, it's there's more to it than that, Larry. It's um, this is to compare the 110 to the 140. Um, it's not night and day. This is a, a we're gonna put a lot more water on our field, um, being being a way better spot with this particular machine. It's not really apples to apples, kind of if that makes any sense. And I don't remember the other one being 3600. Uh, but, but like I said, I can I can look that up and, and let you know or find that out. And this is also everything. This is, and I'm sure it would have been before when it came to properties and facilities, but the hoses, the whole nine yards to run. Okay. 
Anything else? Okay. All right. Thanks, Daryl. Thank you, guys. Okay. Items for discussion. Um, High School North Lehman Intermediate Roof Project. Um, we already kind of discussed that, so we're, we're pretty good there. I want to add a couple things. Today I sent um, the High School South report, uh, the pool report from Josh. He had sent it, I think, to um, Billy and I, or maybe Scott. I, I don't know how it came, but I forwarded that to um, Sharon, Larry, and Wayne today. Um, it just basically gives us a rundown of the pool because there was a question, I think, at last meeting about what was going on with the pool. So that kind of lays it out. I guess we can't really get into that too much tonight because, um, you know, I give you guys a chance to read it. I just got it myself so um, and skimmed over it right before this meeting. Oh, so, I missed the first part here. It, it's who, Who's it from, Josh? It, it was a conversation back and forth. Yes, it's from it's from Josh. It's the reports from Josh. Um, uh, and it was shared uh, like, you know, Scott shared it in email or something somehow. It, so I just wanted to push that forward to you guys. You should have got that already. I did it right before this meeting about an hour before. Um, so just look that over. I guess we'll continue that discussion. Are, well, do we have an S do we have an estimated cost or uh, or do we have any proposal put together yet? Well, there's a couple. Um, so Lisa, if you want me to just yeah, please do, in. please do. It's on your so, Google Drive if you want so to pull. The, yeah, thanks. So the the report uh, was penned by a consultant um, who is Atlantic Aquatic. They are a natatorium design firm, um, you know, specializing in, in pool facilities. So they, they did a complete facility assessment back in the fall when we first started looking at not just the tile, but some of the piping and filtration limitations of the pool. So they put together a report that includes some recommendations that are not just for the immediate needs of the piping but also some other observations for pool improvements. So, you know, ultimately it kind of comes down to the district's appetite in terms of, you know, what's the kind of the vision I'll say for that facility. Um, you know, you're, you're kind of limited. I think it's only a four, four lane pool, if I recall, maybe a six lane. It's, I don't think a facility that's going to be a, you know, showcase PIAA type no. uh, facility for swimming. So, you know, having said that, some of the recommendations in the report, I think, extend well above and beyond what the district's appetite is for a high school facility. So what we wanted to do was just confirm with the district the scope of work. Obviously, we know about the grouting. We know about the piping improvements for the circulation, um, but there were some other items in there that yeah. were mentioned as far as facility improvements that we don't I mean, feel are completely necessary unless you're looking at a complete natatorium renovation. Josh, you know, if you it, add all that up, it's over it's over seven hundred thousand dollars. So yeah, what is correct. it that we have to do to bring this you know up to usable? space, I guess. So that that's where, so the email that I included with that attachment, I broke it down into the piping improvements and also the water chemistry improvements. Uh, from what we've seen, the existing water chemistry system really needs to be updated and replaced, making it an automated system. You know, if it needs chlorine, it will inject the chlorine. Um, if it needs a buffering agent to help level, the, the pH level of the pool. It's an automated system. Um, so, you know, even with some of those improvements we can talk about, are they truly necessary? We can make them even alternates. But, um, you know, going from that complete list of observations and improvements at, like you said, 700,000 down to something that I think was around the range of 140,000 for the more critical 
replacements of piping, um, main drains, and some of the water chemistry components. So when you read that report, just you know, keep in mind that some of the things that were observed aren't necessarily going to be implemented, you know, strictly based on budgetary concerns. Right. So, I mean, really we're saying, I mean, obviously the regrow is something that we need to do um, and the piping and the drains, right? Because they, we were having issues with them, right? Right. Um, and what else did you say? Um, do we need the automated system or is that just some like wish list thing? I, I think, and I can maybe defer to the facilities department, but it, it, it sounds like historically that procedure has been um, pretty intensive with manual adjustments, um, you know, things that could certainly be made more efficient with a new system. Again, I, I'm not here to um, drive the budget or increase the scope. We just wanted to make the district aware that there are some other things that were observed, recommended, and for your consideration in including in the scope. But you know, I'm not here to uh, look at driving up any costs or anything for the district. So, so you know, depending on the, the operation of the facilities department, how comfortable they are with making those chemical adjustments manually moving forward, um, you know, that that comes into the conversation, I think, with what we should or should not include in the scope. So I just sent your attachment. I, maybe I missed something in that email back and forth. So maybe I need to send more to everybody. I'll have to look at that again. I really just saw it quickly before I, this meeting. So is there more? It, you said you added your comments, but which I don't think I saw on that email. No, so at the, at the end of that report, there's a, a very basic, you know, breakdown of, okay, yes. here are the four or six primary concerns and here's an estimated budget for each. Yes. Okay. Okay. So right. I think the first item on that breakdown was if, if we were to completely cut out and replace the perimeter gutter system, that was which the baby, right? would improve, you know, circulation, um, would have some other benefits to it, but when you look at the cost estimate of several hundred thousand dollars to do that, yeah. again, it comes down to what, yeah. what is the extent of improvements for this facility? We have to stop somewhere. Right. Um, you know, so that was one of the things that we were looking at, not going to that extent, but still improving the piping that is going into those existing drain locations. Can I speak to this a little bit? Yes. Who is that? I'm Rob. Sorry. Okay. Yes, please. <laughs> I think I'm, I'm on, it's a little dark in this room. The light's behind me. So no, I just can't um, see everybody. I can't <laughs> see you, Jenny. Uh, okay. So uh, Dr. Riker and I've discussed this multiple times. Um, what my, the, the environmental services department does, we take care of the pool. My guys, my custodians take care of the pool. The issue we're having, the biggest issue is the flow problem. Um, uh, and after multiple conversations with Dr. Riker, I, I, we feel that that's what we should be uh, fixing immediately, um, as well as um, the original scope of work was to regrout. But I, after a lot of discussion and different people looking at it, there's cracks beneath the, the tile. And there's since we removed all the water in the summer, there's more and more tile coming loose every time we clean the pool walls or do anything with the pool. Um, so the pool's currently closed because we don't have proper flow rate. That's number one. We got tagged for that by the Department of Health last year when they came in and inspected that our flow rate was, uh, was, uh, was not up to standards. We're supposed to be pulling, just to give you an idea, we're supposed to be turning over the entire pool, which is 111,000 gallons in eight hours. Right now it's taking 18 hours. So we're not, we don't have, our, we need entire new filtration system, or I mean, I'm sorry, drainage system, which we have, uh, Dr. Reich and I, ha we believe that we can go through the side walls. And, and um, but of course, that's something that uh, I guess, uh, Josh, did you look into that? Is that something we can do? Um, so what you'll see in the report, um, the, so the main drains, in other words, the, the water exits the pool and goes into the filtration system. 
through two large rectangular drains at the deep end of the pool. Um, the piping extending from those drains is severely corroded and really, really limiting the flow into that system. So we're looking at options of abandoning the deep main drains and actually cutting in new sidewall drains because that piping is essentially buried in concrete under the pool. And to try to access it would be a tremendously expensive um, endeavor. So we're looking at the option of cutting in sidewall drains that would replace those drains at the bottom to help improve the circulation. So, I, I mean, just just to finish up what I was saying, uh, I'm sorry if anyone was going to say something, but they, if you removing the tile off the walls, I think is a guarantee. I, in my per professional opinion, all the research I've done in dealing with this pool, there's cracks beneath the tile. So instead of just regrouting, the tile should be removed, the cracks should be fixed, new drainage lines should be put in the side of the pool and that will fix the filtration problem. Speaking of the chemicals, it's been brought up to me recently, and I don't know if um, maybe Daryl or Matt um, can speak of this, but I believe that there is an automatic, uh, there was an automatic system for chemicals, but my predecessor didn't like using it, so somehow disconnected it or something. That's I've heard this recently, I'm still looking into that, um, because there, this pool was updated uh, as far as the exterior, not of course not the pipes encased in cement, but everything exterior, exterior um, was updated in 2007. So I believe that there was a system put in then, um, but it's just not being used properly. Um, so that's something that I'm looking into. Um, but as far as fil fixing the fish filtration issue, um, like I said, speaking with Dr. Riker, um, multiple times. I think that's where we want to go because as far as everything else is concerned, um, like Josh said, we're not going to get an Olympic pool out of this pool. It's, it's just not possible. Um, so doing anything more than that would really be uh, just uh, not beneficial to the taxpayers at all. So I'm hearing this that budgeted? This, is, this is not budgeted. Well, no, this is a uh, part of the capital Sharon. So um, we started with a regrout conversation, which kind of exploded into this whole another issue. Yes. So, um, right. So, uh, Rob, you think that there's some kind of automated system there? Yes or no? I Maybe think you? that I was told re like recently by um, Don Hawker and Victor who take care of the pool. They're my two certified guys that are licensed um, pool technicians. They told me that there was an automatic system put in at some point. It might've been disconnected. I don't know. When I was, I wasn't down there with the aquatic specialist. I don't know. Um, maybe it was taken out completely. I'm not sure. Um, but that's something I'm, I'm still looking into. Um, but I was told that recently that it was just, they didn't, it, they didn't like using it, so they didn't use it. Or that's interesting. Something that okay. I just can't explain. Okay, so maybe we can get to the bottom of that. You are yeah. correct, Rob. There is a system down there. Um, it was abandoned. I do not know the condition of it currently, but there is something there, and we can take a look at it and see if it can be salvaged or not. I think we yeah. should just because what Josh is going to have to put together like what we want as part of a bid process here pretty soon. I'm assuming if we want to. Get working on it this year right this summer and this is something we can get working on as soon as we as soon as possible if if we can move fast enough because we're not using the pool we can't use the pool um we closed it down completely so they're not using it at all right so i'm hearing that we need to retire do, do some repairs and retile and and redo the drains um is that what everybody else heard is that am i right in hearing that josh yeah, that, that is correct. And we can always, you know, we um, have done bid alternates in the past, depending on what we find with the condition of that existing system. Um, we can always make that a bid alternate. Uh, part of that recommendation also included a UV system, um, which is a UV light, and it breaks down the chloramines, uh, which are, is the, you know, chemical component of the chlorine uh, sanitization. Um, to really cut down on 
um, off-gassing, so to speak, of, of the pool water into the space. So, you know, that could always be kind of broken out as a separate component, separate alternate. Right now, honestly, our, our um, biggest effort is making the filtration system work with a new piping arrangement and drainage arrangement. So we're, you know, proceeding with those improvements in the meantime. If we decide to make any other chemical feed adjustments, we can always do that or make that an alternate. So it's not really, you know, holding us up at this point because we certainly have other homework that we're still doing for it. Um, and we can make that determination come bidding how much else we want to do. So when are you, are, are, you're working on this as to put it out for bid when? So what we're you looking, I, I think at this point, um, the other summer projects, Dave and I were, were actually talking about this earlier. We're looking at a March um, approval of the bids. I think this one is probably going to lag by one month into April and be a summer project just kind of based on the complexity of that existing structure down there. Um, but, uh, you know, we're, we're proceeding with what we can in the meantime. Okay. Um, all right. So we're working on it, right? Um, there was just some question, I think, at last meeting. So I wanted to talk about it a little bit more. So everybody's on the same page as to what's going on with that pool. Am I, am I audible? Can you understand? Me? Yep, I can hear you. Um, just, just to clarify for, for Sharon, um, the pool repairs is a line item on the capital plan. However, there has not been a monetary value um, attached to this, just so we're all aware of that. There is a monetary value attached to the regrouting, which is a separate line item, or I believe it's uh, 69000 but just so we're aware of that. How much? And I do have a question for Josh also. Um, regarding How much was the regrout, the Scott? We, we had that, that itemized for 69000 yeah. I believe when originally that was the original scope of this work was to regrout, and that's when we right. and found out all these other um, issues with the pool. And I believe that the the bids that we got at the high, the lowest amount might have been 65000 That's why we attached sixty nine to it at that time. My recollection is correct. Okay. And you had a question for Josh, I think. Yeah, I'm just, just I mean, we were speaking about the um, relocating can. the okay. relocating the drains. Correct, relocating the, the drains. I'm sorry, can you hear me? I, I caught some of that, Scott. Uh, I caught uh, relocating the drains. I didn't catch the first okay. part of, of the question. Yeah. Also, that does that include the intake? Also, the twelve areas of intake. Also, with that. The, the flow into the pool, is that all inclusive? Yeah, so that, that would be um, the piping that penetrates that concrete shell, um, which is currently, I believe, steel still and is corroded. So that would be replaced with a new, most likely uh, PVC piping. Okay, Not thank sure. you. I just want to make sure that was included in that. Okay, okay. thank you. So that's good. I'm glad to hear that's moving forward. Um, right. Excuse me. Yep. If, if Josh gets moving here and gets the bids put out, is is there enough, you know, is there enough time to get the pool back in service for the start of school next year? Yeah, I, I would say yes, Larry. Well, that should be the uh, plan moving forward. All right, and then is the pool, uh, does the pool have water in it or is it empty currently? It currently has water in it. Um, we're not dumping a lot of chemicals into it, but we're keeping it uh, at least balanced enough where we're t still testing the water once daily um, instead of twice daily, just because the test kits cost money. Um, so there's no one using the pool, so we're not really worried about that. Um, but we're just we're keeping it going uh, because there's nothing worse than an empty pool. Um, it just it wouldn't do it uh, any good by leaving it empty for so long. Right. So. All right. And then, Josh, you're thinking that the, the basic package to get us back in business is somewhere between like 140 and 160. That's correct. Yep. All right. Um, all right. If we, you know, 
I mean, if we could get that out to bid tomorrow, I'd be happy. <laughs> it's not going to be tomorrow, Larry. <laughs> no, but you know what I mean. I'd, I'd like to get it, you know, get started on it as soon as we can so we can have it up and running for the start. We're trying of to create urgency. Right. So Larry, yeah, I'll get sorry. it done by Friday. <laughs> okay, no problem. Thank you. I, I knew um, you could handle that, Dr. Riker. I have a I have a couple more things to my little list here um, for discussion. Um, this one's for Matt, I believe. Matt is talking to Miller Flooring about the thresholds. This just came to me at High School North and Lehman Gym. Is he there, Matt? Yes, I'm here. That's correct. Okay. So we're just going to um, see what, do you have any update on that or they're going to take care of it or? Yeah, um, they were there today on site finishing some trim work, but they did not have the metal transition yet. Um, they had to get it custom made and powder coated. Um, and they're just waiting for the new threshold powder coated metal to come in and then they're going to finish installing it. But I've been checking in with them weekly on it to okay. you know keep up the date. Okay. Rebecca had reached out to me to ask about that. So <laughs> I okay. told her I'd follow up tonight. So thank you. Okay. Um, I have and a then, question on, on that also. Uh, Do, or was the, um, um, oh God, the air circulators for under the floor, are they in and functioning? The high school gym, they are in and functioning um, and complete and they were installing them this morning in the Lehman gym when I was up there and saw the, the contractor. All right. And is there any other little details that haven't been addressed yet? Just those transitions I spoke of. Okay. And then, and then the, uh, the air circulators, you know, should be probably finished in a couple of days up North, right? Or at uh, Lehman. Correct. Yep. Okay. Wayne has a question. Okay. Before I forget, we had that significant uh, storm event, the uh, heavy rainfall, I don't know, three, four inches. How did the North Campus roof, did we have any roof leaks? There was no leaks reported to me. And, uh, you know, the only leaks were the leaks uh, in the window systems, like in the cafeteria, in the library. Right, and we're, we're addressing, I got it. Yep, but other than that, there was no leaks reported to me anywhere else. Yeah, and wait oh, yeah. from anybody from the district as well about any roof leaks at um, at North or Lehman as well. Or yeah. All right, and then I okay. think just brought up a, a thought to my mind. What's our backlog on work orders these days? Um, there actually really isn't a back order. We're <laughs> we're keeping up with them as they come in. We've been you know pecking away at. No um, school, right? Any open work orders? Yeah, we've been taking advantage of no students in the schools, so okay. we've been able to get get up to speed. That's great. Love it. And, okay. and we are and we are maintaining our um, our maintenance log also preventative maintenance log also. We're up to date on that also. Great. With the filters. Filters. Um. um everything inclusive. HVAC door checks, building checks, all inclusive. Excellent. I have all right. So I have one more thing. Is everybody good? I have one more thing about um, Lyman and Ash, and um, obviously the board has give direction for ESE. They are working on that, pursuing some kind of litigation on ESE's fire system. Um, where are we? What are we doing with the high school north roof? and the parking lot. I believe we talked about that at the last meeting. And I think the parking lot, we also have to talk about the drains because we can't do anything about the parking lot unless we do something about the drains. And I guess I'm just throwing it out there to anybody. Um, I know Josh, we all had a conversation about the roof. Um, you put forward, um, I guess you gave them all the documentation for the north roof. Is am I correct in that? If I remember correctly. Yes, they they did receive uh, the photos from phase two and the photo log explaining you know why this photo might be important. Um, I'd like to follow up with Mara and see what other type of summary 
um, she would need, there might be a final uh, narrative or something that she would need to help make that final determination, which we can do. Um, but as, as far as, you know, photos and, and drawings and prior documentation and everything that has been provided. Okay, so all that, all the information you think they need is they have already. So I'd like to kind of wrap that up and have them give us some kind of answer for that up there, right? And like, that's the, you also gave her the information on the core samples for the parking lot. And we had information on the stormwater drains as well, right? I mean, obviously we haven't given them direction. They're not really working on that, but do we have all the information needed to have a conversation with them about that or have a conversation with the board? Do you know? With the parking lot, we have given them any existing documentation or investigations, like you said, with the cores um, that we have. So, you know, at this point, any information yes. would be new investigations or, you know, information to be determined, um, okay. I guess, based on the direction of the district. All right. And the storm, the storm drains, we did some you know, we did some investigation with that. We have all that information, correct? Yes. Well, the, the reports that went along with the camera investigation um, and, and for any new new members who maybe who were not here a couple of years ago, we actually had a video inspection performed on all of the storm piping at that campus. I should say at least on the high school side, not necessarily Bushkill, but um, there was a video investigation performed and those photos, those reports have been provided as well. So um, again, any existing or preliminary investigation information has been provided. Okay. All right. I do have a question. When that happens, um, and I'm assuming that the investigative materials were forwarded to Lyman and Ash, is that what you're saying? So that means we are adding additional projects on their deck, potentially, correct? Well, yeah, I just want to, Sharon, I just wanted to make sure that like all that stuff obviously was there. That was the original conversation with High School North with Lyman and Ash. That was the original reason we hired them. I'm not going to go with that statement. No way. Oh. Provide the minutes if you want to make that statement. Okay, but that was the original uh, part oh, of the investigation. The high school to do that. Replacement and the Lehman, and we had to do invest. We we investigated. We took pit photos, etc. So again, yes, I think my question is: so, are you saying that that project was already in Lyman and Ash's hands? Yes. Okay. Do we have a listing of? Um, all of the projects that they are representing us for? I think that's I think that's something like what we talked about at last meeting that we just need a little bit more clarity as to what we're doing. Um, I say clarity because there, you know, there are board members that like yourself and you know that are just wondering where we stand with everything and where where we're going and what we're working on. So I guess. I'm just trying to like make sure that all the information we that we have that is available to them, if the rest of the board chooses to, you know, pursue or I'm really originally looking for Lyman and Ash to say, do we have a case at North Campus? This has been going on We've since had that discussion. Lyman and Ash. So so I'm I would really like them to give their opinion that they were hired as special counsel. So I'm assuming that they should have an opinion as to any litigation that we might have there. Of course That's what I'm trying to get out of them. You've been getting that out of them. All right. So, just, anyway, go just ahead, Larry. The right questions. I'll make sure we do that moving forward. A quick question, uh, Lisa. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. All right. Um, yeah, I don't know. Is Josh still here? I'm still here. <laughs> All right. You know, we, we did we did the what dozen core samples for, you know, around the uh, North High School and Lehman. 
Um, you know, I wonder, you know, I mean, the parking lot is, is in bad shape and, you know, we replaced a lot of the sidewalks up there already uh, that sank and whatever. I, I, I guess we probably, if, if we're going to move forward at some point, I guess we ought to have core samples done at, up at, uh, at Bushkill Elementary and at the, uh, and at the bus lot. Would that make sense? Um, I, I guess my input would be uh, if there's a certain purpose, I mean, if, if we're truly going to move forward with repairs or defining a scope, then I, I would say absolutely. Um, but, you know, maybe let's determine what we're doing with the first round of what we've done before exactly. jumping ahead to, to the next um, right. would be my two cents. Yes, I agree. Okay. Me too. Right. So just let's to understand how we're, yeah the flow of things because it was just sitting and yeah. we don't have any resolve or know where we're going. Yeah. Um, that's just, just information. Uh, yeah. That's money spent until we know what, well, where we're going what, I, I, what, what we I, actually need. What I wanted to try to avoid though was, I mean, if we're going to, if we're going to go to court over it, no sense. We, we have like three cases going all at the same time. We, we dump it all together as one project, you know? And I think that the opportunities, we don't know if we have cases. We don't have any, um, in my, I don't know. I don't know if there's any narrative that's, that tells us where we are in the process. So if yeah. that could be provided, and you might already have that, I'm just so new. Yeah. But I'm just trying to pay attention to, you know, if we're um, investing our time, you know, for a phone call or our money, I think my time is just as valuable as theirs. So I would want to know or be able to explain um, where we are with that. And I'm hoping that we can get better um, at that. Just right. so that, I mean, it, it's the public's money. Right now, okay. you know, we're sitting with Lyman and Ash and they're holding investigative information and we don't know where it's going. So if we could get a little clarity on those potential projects that they have in their hands on what the potential is to move forward. Right. Well, just, just to give you a little Maybe bit. Maybe of... we go, I'm sorry, Larry. Go ahead. And I'm okay with, Larry, I, I don't even think I need any, I mean, not to, um, but I, I understand. I just probably looking for a little more. No, no, I, I understand where you're at and I'm not, and I'm not offended or questioning or anything like that. Um, but just, just uh, you know, Lyman and Ash feels way more comfortable dealing with the parking lot and the drain pipes than they do the roof. So, uh, you know, that's a positive note on that. And we have all heard that statement. Right. Yeah. So, um, so, and, 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 and probably the, the parking lot and the drainage is going to be many more millions than the roof. So, um, Oh, that would be, uh, ridiculous. Yeah. Well. So, so that's exactly my point is in, in asking Josh the information that we have is so that we can get something out of Lyman and Ash. Are we doing anything with the roof? No, he feels more comfortable with the parking lot. Well, let's let's investigate that and let's move that forward then instead of like just talking about it. So that was kind of part of why I brought it up tonight. So we can just right. get a little bit more understanding about where we're going and what well, I'm more interested then in moving forward for specific questions. Then we need to formulate specific questions to give them to Lyman and Ash because we're repetitive with this. Uh, we're, we keep asking the same questions month after month. I know that's why, that's why this right conversation. Down. Here's the uh, questions. Please answer them. So does that mean that you're not interested in continuing with the roof and that you want to move forward with the parking lot? I don't no. recall ever saying that. No, we want to do the roof. Well, the okay, but when you're talking to an attorney, you need to tell them what exactly we're moving forward with. Are we moving forward with the, with the roof? Are we moving forward with the parking lot? Are we moving forward with whatever, the storm we drain? just took minutes a month ago or two months ago. Read them. Okay, I'll read them, Wayne, but I still don't have a clear answer. That's why I'm asking this question today. All right, well, then can we get uh, somebody from Lyman and Ash to meet with us here in the near future? I don't think they need to meet with us. Why do they need to meet with us? Can they just send us an update on what's on their desk on behalf of the East Stroudsburg Area School District? Okay. What's on their desk and how is it moving? Who's that? Who are you speaking of? 
uh, Sharon. What does Lyman and Ash have on their desk on behalf of East Strasburg Area School District and what's the status of each project? Just okay. two questions. We don't need to have a meeting. We know there a meeting okay. is time and money, but if they could just provide us that in writing, what the status is, it could be a one pager. Sounds good. All right. Well, then let's, I guess- Let's work on, I'll work on that. Um, okay, so that's all. Is there any public participation? I see what's going on. Hearing none. I don't, there, okay, motions. I need a motion for item A, the J.M. Hill Elementary proposal for uh, to move forward with the, the project for the principal's office, the room 107 and the installation of the sink and countertop in the main office. Motion. Second. Any other discussion on that? Yeah, if we do need a uh, a plan. It needs the engineer's stamp. It needs to go to the borough for a uh, building permit. Understood. No, I'm, that should be part of the motion. Okay, Rebecca, make that part of the motion, please. All I in have favor? a question. Wasn't oh. that work to be done in house? It is. Yeah, to it be can done be done in house. In -house. So yeah. they just need to get permit. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All in favor? All right. Aye. Aye. Hi. Any opposed? I need um, a motion for to accept action material handling specialist for ten thousand seventy eight dollars and nineteen cents for a genie portable lift model AWP three oh five. I'll move. Second. Any other discussion on that? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? I need a motion to accept Dewey Engineering invoices one through eight. Anybody? A motion for that? <laughs> I'll second it. Any discussion on that? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, opposed? I need a motion to pay invoice 7690 for $500 to Terp Consulting for the elementary consulting fee. And I'm I'm Second. I'd like to abstain. Okay. Um, if you so do that, by law, you have to disclose why if you don't have a conflict of interest. It's not a conflict of interest. I just think additional information should be provided and it would set a precedent moving forward to send an invoice without narrative. It would just become more self-explanatory. Like okay. if the budget, if the, the public received the content that we received, um, I think there would be many questions. I'm just asking for clarity. And I do feel as though being on this meeting, I did get clarity because so many of you are knowledgeable but I would like to set a precedent so that it doesn't happen again. Then if that is the case, Sharon, then this invoice, we should have uh, had this discussion in November as opposed to January. Um, the invoice I can't go backwards, but I'm just saying based on where we are, we if this is my path, vote, is a yes future. or no or an abstain. I'm abstaining and I think I provided justification. I don't think I have to have any further um, clarification or discussion. Okay. Thank you. So Sharona abstains. Um, everybody else? Well, no. It, it, yeah, I, I think that's reasonable to have uh, to make sure that we're not paying that bill twice, once through Lyman and Ash and now paying them again or something. So yeah, can we just, uh, can we table it until we get clarification? Put it on next month's agenda? Um, Dr. Riker? Got any? You can. You don't have to. You don't have to vote on this. You don't have to move it forward. It has to go to finance anyway, so you can bring it back on the agenda for next month. Okay, that's fine. Is that agreeable, Sharon? I'm okay with that. 
That's fine. And, and I don't even believe that my abstention um, warranted not moving forward. I'm just abstaining. No, I, I would. No, you still do have two people that voted for. How many people voted for it? Three, correct? Well, I'd really like to know that we weren't double billed. I don't think it's an issue of being double billed. This yeah, was either. a bill. Yeah, that's yeah, not mine. not a double bill issue. It's it's just more clarity as to what it was for. I mean, it just says expert witness on here um, and travel expenses, which had a, you know, something attached to it and the remaining balance. So. Larry, just to clarify, are you saying a bill from the um, expert witness and a bill from Lyman and Ash for the same phone call? Well, if he if he in fact is billing us mileage and and whatever, that would have been for his initial visit to ESC. He's not bill, billing the mileage. If you look at the invoice, it just says expert witness, but they do have a mileage thing on here, which says zero. So don't disregard what I said. Oh, okay. I'm just reiterating okay. what's on the invoice. If you yeah. look at it, you previously paid. This gentleman, $9,055.48. And that included his uh, fee for the expert witness and his travel expenses for right. $255.48. This invoice is simply saying two and a half hours based on a phone conversation with Lyman and Ash. I'm saying you're probably going to get an additional bill from Lyman and Ash for two and a half hours. Right. For the same conversation. Woo. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, so this so, so a thousand dollar conversation, not five hundred. Right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Then yeah, if that's clear in your eyes, why well, then we need to go ahead and pay him. Okay. So for the all right. So we're going to pay them now? Is that, yeah. you're, you're comfortable with that? Yes. I'm comfortable with moving it forward to finance. Um, so, um, how, Wayne? We have a duty to pay our invoices within 30 days. So, yes. Okay. So that's one abstention and three moving forward, moving it forward. Yes. For the record. Okay. All right. I need a motion to accept the um, site one landscaping supplies for $15,532.80 for the water wheel for the grounds department, the water wheel for the grounds department. And if I, if that was not budgeted, correct? So we're, this is going in. Originally it was, but yeah, now it's good. Whose budget is it coming out of? That's my question. Is, do we, is, do we know that? Is that is this, it's still coming out of grounds budget, correct? Damn right. <laughs> is it? Daryl yeah. is still here? Yes. Why not? Yes. It's still grounds. coming out of your budget, right? Yes. Okay. All right. And Daryl, you have the budget to um, cover it? Yes, we have money in new okay. equipment. Thank you. So let the minutes reflect it's coming out of grounds budget. So I need a motion for that. Can I have a motion first for discussion? A yes. motion? A motion for discussion, yes. I'll second it. Go ahead, Larry. All right. I'd just like to add, you know, like I, I, it's a lot of money for this equipment and, and the hose and whatever. Um, but you know, every year when, when our fields die, we, we spend we spend a lot of money on fertilizer and grass seed and labor to redo the fields and to try to get them back in shape. Um, so even though it's a lot of money for the unit, hopefully in, in the long run, we're going to save money. You know, rather than redoing the fields every year that, you know, we can water them and keep them alive. I agree. All in favor? Aye. Everybody else in favor of that? I don't know where everybody went. Aye. Okay. No. Sorry. That's okay. Uh, Wayne, Wayne's in. Wayne's in? Yeah. Okay. I had to twist his arm, but. Okay. Can I have a motion to adjourn? Motion. 
Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Have a good night. You too. Okay. I think we're going to have to write the questions down. <laughs>